Welcome back from the break, guys. You ever had that game on your shelf and you think it's awesome, but you're just a bit too ashamed to show it to your friends because you're worried of what they might think? This next list is exactly for you. It's called Top 10 Guilty Pleasure Games. Check it out. And number 10 is The Thing. The game is a sequel to the movie. Your Captain J.F. Blake of Beta Team sent there several days after the events in the original movie. The main features of this game are the inclusion of a fear and trust system where you need to gain the NPC's trust before they'll follow your commands. You're out of your league here, Blake. And number 9 is Dark Void. Dark Void brings the player high action flying and gunfighting as you race through the sky shooting aliens and hijacking UFOs. While garnering mixed reviews from critics and players, there's no denying this game is a guilty pleasure. Grabbing elements from other games like Crimson Skies and Gears of War, combining them to give the game its own unique feel. And number 8 is Too Human. If you wanted to see a sci-fi viking game, here it is. Too Human takes two seemingly different genres and combines them to create an enjoyable game, full of hardcore slicing and dicing. The combat in the game really is a guilty pleasure. Who could say no to slashing up a bunch of Norse cyborgs? At number 7 is Pursuit Force. It was one of those games that had a cool concept and drove it into the ground. Being able to jump from car to car while taking down bad guys and using their own cars as cover is cool, but after a while it becomes repetitive and predictable. It's good for short trips like train rides or waiting at a bus stop. And number 6 is Battlefield Bad Company 2. War games are nothing new, but Bad Company 2 was one of the best war shooters I've ever played. It never gets old to hop into a tank and do a drive-by on the enemy, raining chaos down from your attack choppers, and playing with friends makes it all the more fun. Destroying a building and watching it tumble down never gets old. At number 5 is Dynasty Warriors Gundam. A spin-off of the original Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors Gundam gives the player similar elements from the original series, apart from all the robots and mecha suits. The game still offers those hack and slash elements while changing the environment, characters and abilities. You just can't help but feel satisfied after turning a whole armada of robots into scrap metal. And number 4 is Turok Evolution. This game isn't picked for the single player aspect, but for the split screen multiplayer. Bring your friends over to play a few rounds of this game and you won't be disappointed. With a great range of weaponry and maps, from using explosive arrows to blow them up, or using the tech bow to get those headshots, it's always fun to watch your friend's head explode to blow off some steam. And number 3 is Kingdom Hearts. Loved by many, hated by some, this is a game where you want to show your friends how awesome it is, but hold back to not be seen as a kid. Throughout Kingdom Hearts, the game shows Disney and Square Enix characters with the storyline about friendship and the power of light, and your main weapon being a giant key. One key blade is enough for any friendship. And number two is the outfit. While being outcasted by many gamers, it's a guilty pleasure I keep under the rug. Playing as an arcade third-person shooter and using strategy elements, this game is just play and stop fun. Dropping down mounted machine guns anywhere on the battlefield to use made this game worthwhile for quick gaming bursts. By any means necessary. And the number one guilty pleasure game is... Cooler World. It's an old puzzle game for the PlayStation 1 involving a bouncy ball and floating platforms. I myself love this game for its puzzle aspects, but to show this to anyone else and you might find a hard time trying to get them to like it. So that was top 10 guilty pleasure games. Guys, I'm not gonna. I'm not ashamed of it. I have a few of those games in my collection. I believe you guys do too as well. I... You... Of course. Like, all right, hang on, hang on. Uh, no, no, hang no, no, on. no, 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 no. Hang I on. want this no, one. No, me first. I, I don't Battlefield understand. Battlefield Bad Company. What is wrong with that? Kingdom Why is Hearts. That a guilty what? I don't get how that. That's that. That's really arcs me. That's one game in that list. Who King... is researching this stuff for you? Um. <laughs> yeah, researching. We yeah. pay guys for that. <laughs> totally. That really helps the case. <laughs> no, I don't see why Kingdom Hearts is a guilty pleasure game. It might seem a little bit childish, but like that was a long time ago and it's still pretty good. Cause you got all the Disney characters and like it's Battlefield Com Bad Company Two. It's a good shooter with a good story. I like you know, the multiplayer was excellent. Anyway, now we have a WG one hundred one on Dota Two. Hey folks, Lick here to teach you the basics of the popular MOBA Dota 2. 
MOBAs, or multiplayer online battle arenas, came into popularity quite recently. However, they've certainly been around for a while. Like most games, although the look and gameplay can vary greatly from title to title, there are a few core concepts that all MOBAs share. First of all, they're generally played in teams of players online one game at a time, meaning each game is like a game of any other sport. And yes, it's a sport. Once a team wins, the game ends. One game doesn't affect the next. This ensures that each game is played on a level playing field, and once you start a new game, you're given a completely fresh start. Dota is one of the original MOBAs based directly off the original Warcraft 3 mod. Dota 2 is pretty much Dota with some tweaking and a graphical update. Two teams of five players, each playing a different hero with unique abilities, face off in a match that usually lasts between 30 minutes to an hour. Every hero has four abilities, three normal abilities and one ultimate ability. These become stronger as you gain experience and level up. Each hero can also equip items that can be bought at the shops located around the map. We'll talk more about the map layout later. The camera faces down at a bird's eye view, like you might expect to see in a real-time strategy game. With your mouse, you control hero movement and attacks, and your abilities and items are hotkeyed by default to your keyboard. The main hotkeys are your four hero abilities, Q, W, E, and R. The map is roughly symmetrical, with each team in opposing corners. Radiant, the canonically good guys down the bottom left, and Dyer, the embodiment of pure evil residing at the top right. Each team has a walled off base where their ancient sits, heavily protected by towers that do considerable damage to enemy heroes. Dota stands for defense of the ancients, so naturally your goal is to keep your ancient standing while simultaneously striving to expose and destroy the other team's ancient. The rectangular map is split into three lanes, two lanes that go around the outside and one that cuts straight down the middle diagonally. The two territories are split apart by the river. There are different kinds of shops dotted around the map that sell different kinds of items. For example, the secret shop will sell some of the game's most powerful items, but it's harder to reach. Waves of creeps, basic NPC units in Dota, spawn twice a minute from each of the opposing bases. These creeps run down each lane in small waves, similar to what you might expect in a tower defense game, and they can be killed by heroes for gold. Killing the creeps is known as farming. Creeps will try and take out enemy towers, but will usually kill each other off before they get that far. The point where the two waves clash is known as the creep line. By killing off the enemy creeps, a hero can push the creep line up towards enemy structures and do a lot of damage to their towers with their creeps' help. On each side of the map, there is a jungle area where groups of neutral creeps spawn. These neutral parties can be slain by either team for extra gold and experience. Farming these neutral creeps is an important part of a lot of strategies in Dota. As previously mentioned, the object of the game is to get into the opposing team's base and destroy their ancient. Once you do that, you win! However, in order to get there, players have a few basic goals. In order to win the game, you first need to get stronger. You can do this by leveling up your hero and getting gold to buy items. The maximum level in Dota is 25, but not all games go long enough for everyone to get that far. Taking out enemy towers is integral to your success because the Ancient is invincible until the last row of towers are destroyed, and similarly, each tower is protected until you take out the one before it. You will need to work your way up to the enemy base, destroying each tower along the way. As previously mentioned, the most effective way of doing this is by pushing your creeps up to enemy towers. However, while you are closer to enemy structures, you become more vulnerable to attack. Killing enemy heroes in fights not only grants you gold and experience, but also costs them gold and leaves them out of action for a set period of time before they respawn. This gives your team an opportunity to strike, taking out their towers with relative safety. Typically, a Dota team is split up into roles. Just like you have defenders and attackers in soccer, each player has a different position in Dota. Each role is equally important to success. There are many different roles and sub-roles, but most heroes can be split into two categories, carries and supports. Carries spend the game trying to get as powerful as possible by getting as much gold as possible and buying high impact damage items. Supports are in charge of protecting the carries while they're still weak, as well as trying to disrupt the enemy carries and stop them from getting stronger. Supports are also responsible for buying utility items that help out the whole team. While Dota may seem complicated and challenging, once you understand the basics, it's relatively easy to get into, especially if you have friends to play with. As with any multiplayer experience, it's a lot more fun with people you know. Hopefully you now have a pretty solid idea of the basics and are ready to give the game a go. Dota 2 is free to play and you can download it on Steam today.